Imagine a journey that spans over 3,750 years, a story of promises made and promises kept, of exiles and returns, of unbreakable faith and miraculous triumphs. From the call of Abraham to the birth of a modern nation, the story of the Jewish people is one of the most remarkable and inspiring sagas in human history. Join us as we explore the epic journey from ancient times to the present day, a journey filled with battles and blessings, hope and heartbreak, destruction and redemption. Discover how a small nation survived against all odds, keeping alive a promise that would change the world forever. You'll witness the dramatic rise and fall of ancient kingdoms, the destruction of the sacred temple, the resilience of a people scattered across the globe, and the miraculous rebirth of the state of Israel, a nation born in a day, fulfilling prophecies spoken thousands of years ago. This is more than just history, it's a powerful testament to the enduring spirit of the Jewish people, a story that continues to unfold, inspiring the world with the power of faith, hope, and perseverance. Stay with us until the end as we dive deep into this incredible saga, revealing the miraculous moments that have shaped the Jewish people and their unbreakable connection to the land of Israel. If you're inspired by stories of courage, resilience, and divine purpose, this is a journey you won't want to miss. If you love learning about history, faith, and the stories that shape our world, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. Together, let's spread the message of hope and perseverance. So, sit back, relax, and let's embark on an unforgettable journey through time. The incredible story of Israel starts now. Our story begins around 1800s BCE in the ancient city of Ur, a thriving metropolis in Mesopotamia modern-day Iraq. Here lived a man named Abram, later known as Abraham. He was an ordinary man with an extraordinary calling, a calling that would change the course of history. In Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3, God speaks to Abram with a promise and a command. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. At 75 years old, Abram obeys without hesitation, leaving his home, his family, and everything familiar to journey into the unknown. His journey from Ur to the land of Canaan, a land promised to his descendants, marks the beginning of a profound covenant between God and his chosen people. This moment is not just a physical journey, but a spiritual one, filled with faith and trust in God's promises. God's promise to Abraham was more than just land, it was the foundation of the Jewish nation. In Genesis chapter 15 verse 5, God reaffirms his covenant by taking Abraham outside and showing him the stars. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Despite his old age and his wife Sarah's barrenness, Abraham believed God's promise that his descendants would become as numerous as the stars in the sky. This promise wasn't just about numbers. It was about establishing a people set apart to bear witness to God's faithfulness. In Genesis chapter 17, God formalizes this covenant with a new sign and a new name. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. God also introduces circumcision as a sign of this everlasting covenant between him and Abraham's descendants. From this point forward, Abraham is not just the patriarch of a family, he is the spiritual father of a nation. Through Abraham's obedience and faith, God's plan for the Jewish people begins. The covenant established between God and Abraham lays the groundwork for the nation of Israel, a nation destined to bless all the families of the earth just as God promised. The story of the Jewish people continues through Abraham's son Isaac, the child of promise. Isaac's birth, a fulfillment of God's word to Abraham, marks the next step in the unfolding covenant. 
In Genesis chapter 26 verses 3 to 4, God reaffirms his promise to Isaac, Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands, and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and will give them all these lands, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed. Isaac's son Jacob, later renamed Israel after wrestling with God, carries the covenant forward. In Genesis chapter 35 verses 10 to 12, God speaks to Jacob. God said to him, Your name is Jacob, but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and a community of nations will come from you, and kings will be among your descendants. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac I also give to you, and I will give this land to your descendants after you. Jacob's twelve sons become the patriarchs of the twelve tribes of Israel, each representing a distinct part of the growing nation. Among them is Joseph, Jacob's favorite son, whose dreams of greatness and betrayal by his brothers lead him to Egypt. Through a series of divinely orchestrated events, Joseph rises to become a powerful leader in Egypt second only to Pharaoh. During a severe famine, Joseph's wisdom not only saves Egypt, but also his own family. In Genesis chapter 45, verses 7 to 8. Joseph reveals God's purpose, but God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. Jacob and his sons, along with their families, move to Egypt, where they are welcomed and initially thrive in the land of Goshen. The Israelites grow in number and strength, fulfilling God's promise of fruitfulness. However, as generations pass, a new Pharaoh arises who does not know Joseph or remember his contributions to Egypt. Fearing the growing population of Israelites, the Egyptians turn against them, forcing them into brutal slavery. Exodus chapter 1 verses 8 to 10 describes this turning point. Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous, and if war breaks out, will join our enemies. Fight against us and leave the country. The Israelites, once favored guests, are now slaves, suffering under harsh conditions and forced labor. Exodus chapter 1 verses 13 to 14 recounts the cruelty they endured. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in all kinds of work in the field. For over 400 years, the Israelites lived in bondage, oppressed and mistreated, yet growing in number and longing for freedom. During this period, God remains faithful to his covenant, hearing the cries of his people. In Exodus chapter 2 verses 23 to 25 we read, The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. This period of slavery is a dark chapter in the history of the Israelites, but it is also a time of preparation. God is about to act decisively, setting the stage for one of the most dramatic events in the Bible, the Exodus. The story of their suffering and eventual deliverance underscores the enduring faithfulness of God, who never forgets his promises. In response, God raises up Moses, a Hebrew born in Egypt but raised in Pharaoh's palace. After fleeing to Midian, Moses encounters God in the form of a burning bush. In Exodus chapter 3 verses 7 to 10, God speaks to Moses, revealing his plan to deliver his people. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh 
to bring my people the Israelites out of Egypt. As the Israelites flee, Pharaoh changes his mind and pursues them with his army, trapping them at the Red Sea. In one of the most dramatic moments in biblical history, God performs a miracle through Moses. Exodus chapter 14 verses 21 to 22 describes this event. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Israelites cross safely, but when the Egyptians follow, the waters return, drowning Pharaoh's army. This miraculous deliverance is celebrated in the Song of Moses, recorded in Exodus chapter 15 verses 1 to 2. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense, he has become my salvation. Despite this incredible victory, the journey to the promised land is not easy. The Israelites wander in the wilderness for 40 years, a time marked by trials, complaints, and God's continued provision. In the wilderness, God provides manna from heaven, water from a rock, and guidance through a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. But the defining moment of this journey occurs at Mount Sinai, where God makes a covenant with his people. In Exodus chapter 19 verses 5 to 6, God sets the terms of this covenant. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. At Mount Sinai, God descends in fire and smoke and the entire mountain trembles. It is here that God gives Moses the Ten Commandments inscribed on tablets of stone. These laws form the moral and spiritual foundation for the Israelite nation emphasizing their unique relationship with God and outlining how they are to live as his chosen people. Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 to 3 begins, The Ten Commandments were the declaration of God's sovereignty. And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. In addition to the Ten Commandments, God gives Moses a comprehensive set of laws covering every aspect of life, moral, ceremonial, and civil. These laws establish justice, worship, and community among the Israelites, setting them apart from other nations. Moses' time on the mountain is so transformative that when he returns, his face shines with the glory of God reflecting the divine encounter. Exodus chapter 34 Verse 29 captures this moment. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. Yet, even as God reveals his law, the Israelites struggle to remain faithful. While Moses is on the mountain, the people build a golden calf, turning away from God in a moment of rebellion. Despite this, God shows mercy and reaffirms his covenant with Israel, underscoring his patience and commitment to his people. After 40 years in the wilderness, the Israelites finally stand on the brink of the promised land, Canaan. Under the leadership of Joshua, Moses' successor, they cross the Jordan River, marking the beginning of a new chapter. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, God encourages Joshua with a powerful charge. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. The conquest of Canaan is not without challenges. The Israelites face fortified cities, fierce enemies, and battles that test their faith. One of the most famous victories is the Battle of Jericho, where God's supernatural intervention brings down the city's walls. Joshua chapter 6 verse 20 recounts this miraculous event. When the trumpets sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. Joshua leads the Israelites in conquering much of the land, dividing it among the twelve tribes of Israel. However, the conquest is incomplete. 
and remnants of Canaanite culture continued to influence the Israelites, setting the stage for the period of the Judges. The era of the Judges is a turbulent time marked by cycles of disobedience, oppression, repentance, and deliverance. Judges such as Deborah, Gideon, and Samson rise to deliver Israel from its enemies, but the nation struggles with idolatry and internal conflict. Judges, chapter 21, verse 25, captures the spirit of the time. In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. The Israelites, weary of chaos, demand a king to lead them like other nations. God grants their request, and Saul is anointed as Israel's first king. However, Saul's disobedience leads God to choose another, a shepherd boy named David. David, a man after God's own heart, unites the tribes of Israel and establishes Jerusalem as the nation's capital. He is not only a warrior king but also a poet and musician, composing many of the psalms that reflect his deep relationship with God. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16, God makes a covenant with David, promising that his dynasty will endure forever. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. David's reign brings stability and expansion to Israel, and he dreams of building a temple for God. However, God chooses David's son Solomon to fulfill this vision. Solomon's wisdom and wealth become legendary, and under his reign, Israel reaches the peak of its power and prosperity. Solomon builds the first temple in Jerusalem, a majestic structure that becomes the spiritual heart of Israel. The temple is not just a place of worship, but a symbol of God's dwelling among his people. Its construction is detailed in 1 Kings chapter 6, highlighting Solomon's dedication to honoring God. When the temple is completed, Solomon dedicates it with a grand ceremony. 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 10 to 11 describes the powerful moment when God's presence fills the temple. When the priests withdrew from the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled his temple. Solomon's prayer of dedication in 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 27 to 30 reflects his recognition of God's greatness and the temple's role as a house of prayer for all people, but will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you, how much less this temple I have built. Yet give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy, Lord my God. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. However, despite Solomon's wisdom, his later years are marked by compromise as he turns away from God, influenced by foreign wives and idolatry. His reign ends with the seeds of division that will eventually split the kingdom. After Solomon's death, the kingdom is divided into Israel in the north and Judah in the south, leading to centuries of conflict, decline, and eventual exile. Yet, the era of the kings remains a defining period in Jewish history, a time when Israel's greatest triumphs and failures unfolded. After centuries of triumphs and failures, the northern kingdom fell to the Assyrians in 722 BCE, but the kingdom of Judah held on for another century, until a dark moment in Jewish history, the Babylonian conquest. In 586 BCE, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon besieged Jerusalem, destroying the city and the first temple, the magnificent sanctuary built by Solomon. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 25, verses 8 to 9, recounts this devastating event. On the seventh day of the fifth month, in the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard, an official of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every important building he burned down. The destruction of the temple was not just a political disaster, it was a spiritual catastrophe that shook the foundations of Jewish faith and identity. The people of Judah were taken captive and exiled to Babylon, a foreign land filled with unfamiliar gods and customs. 
Psalm chapter 137 captures the deep sorrow of the exiles. By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy, they said, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Yet in the midst of despair, God's promises remained. The prophets, including Jeremiah and Ezekiel, spoke of hope and restoration. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 10 to 11, God reassures his people of a future return. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Even in exile, the Jewish people adapted, preserving their faith through prayer, study, and the establishment of synagogues. The experience of exile deepened their spiritual life, fostering a renewed commitment to the laws and traditions that defined them. God's promise of restoration begins to unfold when Babylon falls to the Persian Empire. In a remarkable turn of events, King Cyrus the Great issues a decree allowing the Jews to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. This moment is captured in Ezra, chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem, and may their God be with them. Under the leadership of Zerubbabel, Joshua the high priest, and later prophets like Haggai and Zechariah, the Jewish exiles return and begin the difficult work of rebuilding. Though they face opposition and challenges, the second temple is completed, marking a moment of renewed hope and divine favor. Though the second temple lacked the grandeur of Solomon's temple, it became the spiritual heart of Jewish life once again. The restoration of the temple symbolized God's faithfulness to his promises and the resilience of the Jewish people. Following the return from exile and the rebuilding of the second temple, the Jewish people found themselves under the rule of successive foreign empires, first the Persians, then the Greeks. During the Hellenistic period, the cultural influence of Greece permeated the ancient world, reaching even into the heart of Jewish life. Under the rule of Antiochus IV Epiphanes, a Greek king of the Seleucid Empire, the situation for the Jews became dire. Antiochus sought to enforce Hellenistic culture and religion upon his subjects, outlawing Jewish practices, desecrating the temple in Jerusalem, and even erecting an altar to Zeus inside the holy sanctuary. The Jewish people were faced with a choice, abandon their faith or resist at great personal risk. Amid this oppression, a group of Jewish rebels rose up, led by a priest named Mattathias and his five sons, including the most famous Judah Maccabee. The Maccabees, as they came to be known, launched a courageous revolt against the Seleucid forces, determined to reclaim their land and restore their worship. The Maccabean Revolt, which began in 167 BCE, was a remarkable struggle of a small band of Jewish fighters against one of the most powerful empires of the time. Against all odds, the Maccabees won a series of battles, recapturing Jerusalem and cleansing the defiled temple. 1 Maccabees chapter 4 verses 36 to 38 records the moment they regained control. Then said Judas and his brothers, Behold, our enemies are crushed. Let us go up to cleanse the sanctuary and dedicate it. So all the army assembled and went up to Mount Zion, and they saw the sanctuary desolate, the altar profaned, and the gates burned. However, the victory of the Maccabees did not bring lasting peace. Political infighting, external pressures, and the rise of new empires continued to challenge Jewish autonomy. By 63 BCE, the Roman general Pompey the Great conquered Jerusalem, bringing the Jewish people under Roman rule. Roman occupation marked a complex and often harsh period in Jewish history. Heavy taxation, religious restrictions, and the presence of Roman soldiers in the holy city fueled resentment and unrest. 
The longing for a deliverer grew, and many Jews looked to the ancient prophecies, hoping for the coming of a Messiah who would free them from Roman oppression. The atmosphere in Judea became increasingly tense, with various Jewish groups responding in different ways, some seeking peaceful coexistence, others advocating for revolt. In 66 CE, this unrest erupted into the great Jewish revolt against Roman rule, a desperate and courageous struggle for independence. However, the Roman response was swift and brutal. Under the command of General Titus, Roman forces besieged Jerusalem in 70 CE, leading to one of the most catastrophic events in Jewish history, the destruction of the Second Temple. The destruction of the Second Temple was not just the loss of a physical structure, it was the loss of the spiritual and cultural heart of the Jewish people. The temple was the center of worship, sacrifice, and national identity. Its fall represented a profound rupture in the life of the Jewish nation. After months of siege, starvation, and fierce fighting, the Roman army breached Jerusalem's defenses, setting the city and the temple ablaze. The historian Flavius Josephus, a witness to the destruction, described the scene as apocalyptic with the temple engulfed in flames and the streets filled with blood. The Arch of Titus, erected in Rome, commemorates this victory, depicting Roman soldiers carrying the sacred vessels of the temple, including the menorah, as spoils of war. The destruction of the temple marked the beginning of the Jewish diaspora, a period of nearly 2,000 years during which the Jewish people were scattered across the world. Without their homeland and temple, Jews found themselves in foreign lands, facing persecution, marginalization, and often forced conversions. Yet through it all, they maintained their distinct identity, culture, and faith. As the Jews spread across Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, they carried with them the memory of Jerusalem and the hope of one day returning to their ancestral land. Despite the scattering, Jewish communities established synagogues, schools, and systems of study that preserved their traditions and beliefs. The rabbis, particularly those in the Yavne community in Israel, played a critical role in adapting Judaism to life without the temple. They developed practices centered around prayer, Torah study, and community gatherings, helping Judaism transition from a temple-based religion to one that could survive and thrive in the diaspora. Throughout the Middle Ages and beyond, Jewish communities faced countless challenges, including expulsions from Spain, France and England, ghettos in Italy and Germany, and the horrors of pogroms and violence in Eastern Europe. Despite these hardships, the Jewish people clung to the promises of God, as expressed in the words of the prophets, who spoke of a future return to Zion. The Jewish longing for Jerusalem remained a constant through centuries of exile. The traditional phrase, next year in Jerusalem, recited at the end of the Passover Seder, captured the hope of return, a hope that sustained the Jewish spirit during times of profound suffering. For nearly 2,000 years, the Jewish people lived in exile, clinging to the hope of returning to their ancestral land. The dream of Zion, a homeland where they could live as a free people, was kept alive through prayer, tradition, and a profound connection to the land promised to their forefathers. In the late 19th century, a movement emerged that sought to transform this ancient hope into a modern reality. This movement was Zionism, a political and cultural initiative aimed at the re-establishment of a Jewish homeland in Palestine. It was born in response to rising anti-Semitism in Europe, where Jews faced increasing discrimination, violence, and pogroms. One of the leading figures of this movement was Theodor Herzl, an Austrian Jewish journalist who became the visionary leader of modern Zionism. Herzl was deeply moved by the Dreyfus Affair, a case in France where a Jewish army officer was falsely accused of treason revealing the depth of anti-Semitism in even the most progressive societies. In 1896, Herzl published his seminal work, Der Judenstaat, the Jewish State, which argued that the only solution to the Jewish question in Europe was the establishment of a Jewish state. Herzl's vision was not just about finding a safe haven, but about reclaiming the Jewish identity and renewing the spiritual and cultural connection to the land of Israel. 
Herzl famously stated, if you will it, it is no dream, encapsulating the spirit of the Zionist movement. In 1897, he convened the first Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland, which brought together Jewish leaders from around the world. At this historic Congress, Herzl articulated the goal of Zionism to establish a home for the Jewish people in Palestine secured under public law. The Congress ignited the dream of return and set in motion a series of efforts to realize this goal. Jews from Eastern Europe, driven by persecution and inspired by the vision of Zionism, began to immigrate to Palestine. These early pioneers, known as the First Aliyah, arrived in the late 1800s, bringing with them the determination to rebuild their ancient homeland. They purchased land, drained swamps, and established agricultural settlements, laying the groundwork for a new society. The return to the land was not only physical, but also cultural. The Hebrew language, which had been reserved for prayer and religious study, was revived as a spoken language, becoming a symbol of national renewal. As Jewish immigration increased, tensions between Jews and Arab populations also grew, leading to clashes and political challenges. Despite these difficulties, the Jewish community, known as the Yishuv, continued to build and expand. New cities like Tel Aviv were founded, and institutions such as the Hebrew University in Jerusalem were established, reflecting a growing sense of national pride and purpose. The journey to a Jewish homeland reached a critical and heartbreaking chapter during the Holocaust, one of the darkest periods in human history. Between 1941 and 1945, the Nazi regime orchestrated the systematic genocide of six million Jews across Europe. This unimaginable horror, known as the Holocaust, left a permanent scar on the Jewish people and the world. The Holocaust was not just a tragic loss of life, it was an assault on the very essence of Jewish identity and existence. In the ghettos of Eastern Europe, families were torn apart, starved, and subjected to inhumane conditions. In the concentration and extermination camps, men, women, and children faced forced labor, medical experiments, and mass executions. Despite the horrors they endured, the Jewish people held onto their faith and identity. Stories of resistance, survival, and acts of courage in the face of certain death emerged as a testament to the unbreakable spirit of the Jewish people. Even in the darkest moments, many Jews continued to pray, observe traditions, and dream of a return to Zion. On May 14, 1948, a historic moment unfolded in Tel Aviv. In a small room crowded with Jewish leaders, journalists, and diplomats, David Ben-Gurion, the leader of the Jewish community in Palestine, stood before the microphone. With a resolute voice, he proclaimed the establishment of the State of Israel, fulfilling a dream that had sustained the Jewish people for nearly 2,000 years. The declaration came just hours before the British mandate over Palestine expired, marking the end of British colonial rule and the birth of a new nation. As Ben-Gurion read aloud the Declaration of Independence, the words of ancient prophecy seemed to echo through the room. The declaration was met with tears of joy and exuberant celebration. Jews danced in the streets singing Hatikva, the anthem of hope that had sustained their hearts through generations of exile, persecution, and longing. However, this joy was tempered by the immediate challenges that lay ahead. The very day after the declaration, the new state was plunged into war. Neighboring Arab nations, Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq, launched a coordinated invasion, determined to crush the fledgling Jewish state. The War of Independence, as it came to be known, was a brutal and desperate struggle for survival. Against overwhelming odds, the Israeli forces, composed of Holocaust survivors, farmers, and young men and women, managed to hold their ground. With few weapons and limited supplies, they defended their newly founded homeland with unparalleled courage and determination. By early 1949, Israel had emerged victorious, securing its borders and gaining international recognition as a sovereign state. The price of this victory was steep, 
Thousands of lives were lost, and the young nation faced the daunting task of integrating hundreds of thousands of Jewish refugees from war-torn Europe and the Arab world. In the years that followed, Israel transformed from a fledgling state into a thriving nation. Desert lands were irrigated, cities were built, and the Hebrew language, long confined to sacred texts, became the living language of the streets. The ingathering of exiles continued, as Jews from across the globe, Ethiopia, the Soviet Union, Yemen, and beyond, returned to their ancestral homeland. Each arrival was seen as a fulfillment of biblical prophecy, echoing God's promise in Amos chapter 9, verses 14 to 15, I will bring my people Israel back from exile. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. The establishment of Israel was not merely a political event, it was seen by many as a divine fulfillment of the ancient covenants God made with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. It was a testament to the enduring faithfulness of God, who had promised to gather his people back to their land. The Jewish people, once scattered to the four corners of the earth, had returned home, and their national rebirth was nothing short of miraculous. Israel's journey from ancient promises to modern statehood stands as a powerful reminder of the resilience and hope that define the Jewish people. It is a story of faith triumphing over adversity, of promises kept through generations, and of a nation reborn from the ashes of history. From Abraham to the state of Israel, the story of the Jewish people is one of unbroken connection to their God and their land. It is a testament to the enduring covenant between God and His chosen people, a covenant that continues to shape the destiny of Israel today. The establishment of the State of Israel was not the end, but the beginning of a new chapter, one filled with challenges and triumphs, with ongoing conflicts and enduring hopes. Through it all, the people of Israel remain steadfast, guided by the ancient words that have sustained them for millennia. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more insights into history and faith. Shalom.